Hello everyone, really excited uh, to be here. Um, let's start, who got this amazing message from uh, his agent that he got way too many tools? So we all see it um, when we're working with, especially with enterprises. It starts with, I really want to use few tools, few MCPs like Playwright or DevTools soon. Um, and then they want to add a bit more. I want to add my GitHub as well. It's becoming really cool and they see all the benefits and they get really excited. And they said, I want everything. And then it really become a mess. So before I start, my name is Shalev. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Webricks. We are uh, helping enterprises really adapt MCPs uh, and everyone in the enterprise. We build the MCP gateway. Um, I was previously uh, uh, the head of Wix OS and Dev Center, leading the Wix platform. Um, and I started coding when I was seven, which today it's not really exciting because the Vibe code, I think you started in uh, age five. Um, so let's start and deep dive into too many tools. Um, so let's talk about the problems. What is really the problem with too many tools and why do we really care? Um, so three main issues with having too many tools in your agents. The first one, you're probably all familiar. It's the context. When you use the tools, you actually take all the description, everything about the tool, the arguments, is inside your context. So it's not just taking a lot of context, it can really cost you a lot of money when you are using too many tokens just to show the tools. You didn't even use a single tool and you already use a lot of context. The second one is if you are familiar uh, with how LLM works is the attention part. If you have too many tools, you can have attention of all of your tools and your LLM will start making a lot of mistakes because it really can't know which attention to put on which tools. And the third one is about the performance and accuracy. Um, it happens sometimes that when you have too many tools and some tools are really familiar with each other, the LLM can make some wrong assumptions and it actually happens to some of our users that instead of checking the data, he saw that he have a way to post a Slack message. So he just Slack messages the entire company with the questions, uh, which is a big issue. Um, but I'm not here to talk to you about the problem. I'm going to talk to you about some solutions. Um, and this is part of the journey that we had on helping enterprises to adapt AI efficiently. Um, I'm going to show some of the solutions and it's really important there is no like uh, at the end of the uh, presentation to show this is the right solution. Okay, we are going to have multiple different solutions and each solution um, is good for different use cases. So we'll start with the obvious solution that you are familiar, just disable the tools. Okay, so all of you have different MCP clients and you have just the toggles and it's really easy. Okay, you just go there and you say, I don't really need some of the tools. So you turn off the toggle or click on the tool and it's just gone and you have less tools, which is really, really great. Um, and even some of the MCPs, for example, like GitHub, help you with providing a flag that says, okay, just use some of the tools. So let's just use tools related to repos or issues or pull requests. And now instead of 93 tools, I have only 51, um, which is a great option. Um, so a bit about disabled tools. What is it good for? First of all, quick updates. I'm in the context, I'm the client. I don't need to go anywhere. I just disable the tool, really nice. I can make changes inside the context that I work now. I need another tool, just enable it, really simple. Uh, and it works when you have not too many tools, okay? So if you have like 100 tools, you can disable 50 of them and it works pretty well. Um, but the problem is, first of all, it's really time consuming. If you work with um, a single dev part and now you want to work on some presentations, MCPs, you don't really want to disable, enable all over again all the time. Um, it can't be shared. So if you are work and you created a great tool set of tools and you want all your team to use it, you can't really share it between the teams usually. And you need to reset up for each MCP client. So if you want to chat GPT and then you go to Cloud and to Curse and VS Code, you need to reset it each time. And then we came up with the second solution, which is toolkits. Um, you heard probably of toolkits with uh, different names. Um, so we call it toolkits, and toolkits is just a way to say, okay, let's take some tools 
the same way that we enable disable some of them, and just wrap it up as a new MCP. Okay, so now we have a front-end toolkit that don't need to really write to Jira and do some complex stuff, but you need to just get some of the issues, uh, get the Figma, get some GitHub stuff. Um, and now, instead of having different MCPs, we have one MCP, which is a toolkit for front-end, and it has uh, 32 tools just designed for him. Um, and we already see a lot of toolkits in actions that really give a lot of benefits, um, which is something that you can do to like invite a lot of people from Spreadsheet to onboarding session, and you need only specific tools for that. And it's really good for autonomous agents uh, because you already know what are the scopes or capabilities that they need. So usually taking some of this toolkit and say, okay, agents that do this, take these toolkits, this is the tools that you need. You don't need all the MCPs just plug and play, and we find it really useful. So, what toolkits are uh, easy? It's really easy to use. You can share it between different clients and between um, uh, the team, and it's really good for specific tasks or specific roles that you have. What's the problem? Usually, if you're missing some tools, it's really um, a bummer sometimes that you need to somehow add it to the toolkit or add another MCP or two toolkits and it become a bit of a mess. Um, you need to switch sometimes or add tools or switch between toolkits. Um, and sometimes you know that a specific role, we saw that someone is a um, product manager and he says, I need everything in my toolkit because product manager, of course, does everything. Um, and then we saw another kind of solution, which I uh, call the search and call. So, search and call is, imagine that you have thousands of tools, okay? And you just take all of your tools and put it inside a rug. So, instead of having the MCP, let's take all the tools together, put it outside, and instead of handling it with our own LLM in the client, let's handle it in our MCP. So, what we actually have is two tools, two tools for everything that we need, okay? So the first tool is the search tool. Uh, we have different implementations that we see for the search tool. And of course, some implementations we see more than two tools. Um, so the search tool actually help us find the right tools that we need and give us all the context that we need to call this tool. Okay, so I search that I want to um, get data from Slack. And he says, okay, here is Slack get conversation and you need to pass the channel ID and how many messages do you want. And then I have a second tool, which is the call tool. I just take the arguments. Uh, the call tool is usually looks like what is the tool name and arguments with its um, generic object that you can pass anything to it, okay? Um, so, Search and call, I must say that we saw it in a lot of places. Why? Because it's really easy to implement and you think like, okay, I just figured it out. I have all the tools, it's inside the rug, it works amazing. Um, and it really works well for companies that started from APIs. So let's say that you have thousands of APIs and then you say, okay, I need to create MCP. You usually say, okay, let's take all these APIs and documentations and just make it an MCP. And the right solution for that is the search and call. So it's really cool and really work well when you have many tools in the same domain. So not different domains, which make it pretty easy, uh, hard to do it. Um, and it's really good when it's hard to determine the relevant tools before. Because in toolkits, you remember, we need to figure out, okay, what exactly front-end developer needs and which tool does he need. Uh, and the MCP is really good when you have some employee that says, I really want to use MCP. What do I do now? And you say, okay, just use it. It works. Um, the problem, I think the main problem here is there is not enough context to know when to call to search. Um, and I think this is one of the blockers that we saw and we said, okay, we can't really use it because sometimes the LLM just call the search always because what can I do? Okay, let's call the search. Maybe you have tools for that. Uh, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of data. 
Uh, and sometimes I know I have the right tool, but the LLM doesn't know it exists. So we just try to open the browser or run some CLIs, uh, and it's not really understand that it needs to call the search to get solution. Uh, we have the arguments validations. So if you don't have really an input schema for your tool for the call, sometimes it can make it wrong and it will just not work. Um, and you uh, use your own LLM on the back end to determine the tools. So if you want to like check different LLMs and you work with a uh, cloud, um, the server will always use probably the same um, LLM. Um, so this was a good solution. And then we are coming to the fourth solution, which is the DMCP. Okay, so before we'll talk about DMCP, let's talk about some part of the protocol that I'm not sure all of you uh, have been used because it's not widely used and widely familiar, is dynamic tools. Dynamic tools, which actually uh, it thinks it is not just for tools, it's also for prompt or resources, um, is the ability to tell the client, the MCP client, something changed in the tools, please call the list tools again. So how it works in the discovery phase, when I run the MCP server, I get the list of tools. Um, when I do some tool selection um, or other connection to the server, I can just send a notification that says a tool list has changed, which tells the clients, please fetch again the list of tools, and now I have other tools. So what we are going to do with that? Um, there are different parts of the implementations. What we found useful is just create a new tool, part of this dynamic MCP. The new tool, which is called eTools, um, will just give the tools that we need. We usually put some arguments with description, minimal descriptions of all the tools that we have. And when you call it and says, okay, please add tool one, two, and three, um, it will send the notifications back to the client and say, okay, the list has changed, and it will fetch again the tools. How it looks exactly? So we have on our server a stack of tools. Okay, the stack of tools give us the most recent tools that we use or we added, and of course, another tool that is the air tool. When I call the air tool, I take this stack. By the way, this stack can be saved as part of the user session or new database, part of the user authentication. You decide how you do it. Um, we just add on the top of the stack all the new tools that we created and just remove from the bottom of the stack, uh, all the tools that not recently been used. Um, a bonus point of that is um, that we saw that there are more parameters that we can add to this stack uh, in order to make sure that we have some sort of heat rate because the, we want to make sure that we can have all the tools that we need um, um, as um, visible as possible. So you can add some of less used, um, less installed, uh, and some things like that, and then you will have it um, easier on your side. Um, I will show a bit of a demo of how it looks like from our end. Okay, we'll run it a bit forward. Just connect to the DMCP. Cool. So. Now, as you can see, I have a list of tools, and the top tool is the add tools, and I have 30 tools enabled from GitHub, Figma, Google, Calendar, and so on. Now I'm going to tell, please uh, help me summarize tickets from Jira and send it to Slack. Um, now, the first thing that it's going to do is going to add the necessary tools. It will call all tools, and as you can see, we got new tools, the Slack post message, the Slack find channel ID, and the Jira get issues. Um, the nice thing about it is not just that we got the tools and now we know that new tools, is that um, all the tools as all the arguments, all the descriptions, so I really know how to use these tools. Uh, we know that sometimes when he says, okay, it doesn't work, I need more tools, he can do it all over again and again. Okay. So, DMCP, um, what is good for if you have many tools, um, if you usually use the same set of tools, so you know we need um, uh, to get a good uh, hit rate, 
Uh, and it's really, really good, we saw, when you're not sure which tools are needed. Um, so if you have like a new employee that is just coming in and he wants to just use the DMCP, it just work and finally he will get all the 30 or 20 tools that he really uses on a daily basis. Uh, and this is a really great way to start and use um, MCPs. Um, main problem, not all MCP clients really implemented the list change. We saw it uh, originally in Kerosene, in VS Code, in Cloud, uh, but we probably need more time for new clients to just adapt uh, the new notifications. Uh, but I guess it will happen, as you know, in MCPs. In the next few weeks, everything happens. Um, the second problem is it takes time to add new tools. So instead of having all the tools right away and I can just call them, I usually can have um, a prior um, tool that I need to call. I need to add a tool and then I need to call it again. And also, um, as we talked before, if I put some of the tools in the description of the add tool, it takes some context. So you need to make sure that you don't put too many things on the end tool. I will do some, a bit of a summary because we talked a lot about different approaches. Um, I will not talk about everything, but of course you have everything here, so um, feel free. Um, disable tools, the simple one. Please don't go to the other solution if disable tools works for you, okay? It's the best way to really enable simple tools. Uh, and if you don't have so many tools and you don't switch them and you don't need robust system, just use the disable tools. Toolkits, I think, can be the next steps of your way. Um, and it's really got a lot of adoptions for users that really can create their own toolkits, can share it. It's really great for teams that really want to share toolkits between each other and teams that work together uh, or guilds in some companies. So works really well. Search and call, if you don't have any other solution, it's really good. Um, but also if you know that all of your way is working with tools. But I think search and call has a lot of issues that currently uh, we are just waiting for better solution than the search and call. Um, and the same DMCP, which is pretty early uh, to use, but really works well when you do it um, dynamically. So what is the future? Um, I think that too many tools and we saw some solutions and you said, okay, it's really great, it can help me, but you don't really think it's going to be the solution in the future. We can't really always manage the tools and work uh, on this part of things. So I think there are two parts that we are moving for. One is the AI native tools. I think that clients need to change the way that tools are being used. Uh, I think that they need to think about tools, not just uh, as something that you use and it's there, you need to be more sophisticated about when you get the tools, when you put it in the context. You need to make sure the tools are not just API wrappers. You need to think about capabilities. And I think the next thing in future is about the A2A. Um, right now, when we talk about agents, we usually say, let's make a super agent that knows everything, gets all the context. But I think the future can be different. It can be, um, a different agents that you use. You don't really need a super agent that knows everything, that connects to everything. You need to work like AI workforce. So you have special person that knows how to do the things and you just ask him to do it and he will do it. If you want to notify, you don't really care if you connect to Gmail or to Slack or to other notification system. You tell the agents that know how to notify people, please notify, he will do it for you. Uh, and you have uh, one that will help you do the meetings and you have a one that will develop things and design things and a lot, a lot of agents that works for you. Then we'll have too many agents, but that's for the next presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, if you want to try uh, toolkits, um, feel free to use and we will really uh, be happy to get your feedback. Thank you. <laughs>